In this video, we're going to talk about sodium borohydride reduction mechanism. The first thing I want to point out is that sodium borohydride cannot reduce an ester, carboxylic acid, and amide. It can only reduce aldehyde, ketone, and acyl chloride. So whenever you are given a compound, you need to first identify the functional groups that are present in order to know what part is being reduced. So for this particular compound, the functional group present that has carbonyl groups are two. To have this, Now this here is an ester, and we have this, this is a ketone. So now we know that sodium borohydride cannot reduce an ester, therefore we're going to concentrate more on the ketone part, okay? And we're going to leave the ester the way it is because this particular reagent cannot reduce an ester. So the first step here is to give the product. Okay, when you are giving something like this and you are asked to give the product, all you just need to do is to change this part to OH. So this is going to be our product. That is just it. You leave every other thing the way they were. So you move from a ketone to an alcohol. So this ketone was changed to alcohol. Now let's move on to the mechanism. What steps we're taking to get the alcohol? So we then have this written out. The sodium part is the positive end and the borohydride is the negative end. So the first step is addition of hydrogen to the carbonyl or to the carbon bearing the oxygen. So the double bond, one of the bonds break and we have an acoside forming. So we have this. And of course, the hydrogen has been added. All of this part is untouched. We leave it the way it is. The next step would then be, we have ethanol in the, as a solvent. So we're gonna be picking up the hydrogen from ethanol. So this picks up this hydrogen. Is for bricks, and that is how we got the OH in our answer in the products we drew earlier. So that's the steps you take. The first step add your hydrogen, the second step is to protonate the acoside that was formed using the solvent that was given. Sometimes you are given an acid worker, you also pick the H from the acid. Okay, this is the second question I have here. So here you are given a reaction and you are asked what the product is, okay? Um, first things first, you look at the functional groups that you have in the compound. Now in this compound, we have this, an aldehyde, And we have this, a carboxylic acid. Okay, so we have a carboxylic group and we have an aldehyde. Now, as I mentioned earlier, sodium borohydride will not be able to reduce carboxylic acid. So your focus would then be on the aldehyde. Now, since we are asked for the product, we're going to drop the product to look like this. 
So this is going to be our product. All you just have to do is concentrate on the aldehyde and turn that to alcohol. Okay, turn this carbonyl part to the alcohol and you leave the carboxylic acid the way it is. So this would be the product for this particular reaction. Now, let's do the mechanism. So for the mechanism, the first step would be addition of hydrogen, okay? So you have this written out this way, have this, and the hydrogen attacks the aldehyde, breaks this bond, and forms a calcite, which is the intermediate. Now from here, the acolzide is going to pick up H from this methanol. So you have CH3OH. So this picks up this H, this bond breaks in. And you have your product. So pretty straightforward. Now the last one is the SI chloride. So in this case, it's like a two-step reaction. First would be reduction to an aldehyde and the second part would be reducing the aldehyde to alcohol. All right, so here we do not have another, we have only one carbonyl compound, which is the SI chloride. And so you don't have to worry about trying to look for the other functional groups that know what they are. So since it's just an SI fluoride and sodium borohydride is capable of reducing an SI fluoride to alcohol, we know that our product will be simply this whole compound here. Every other thing remains the same. Just change this. OH. So if you are asked to just give the product, all you just need to do is change the carbonyl compound to alcohol. Okay. You don't have to go through the mechanism to figure it out. So just change this aspect, break the bond and add H to the oxygen. That's just all you need to do. Okay. But if you're asked to now draw the mechanism, it involves two steps. The first step is reducing this to an aldehyde and the second step is then to down to alcohol. So let's do the mechanism. So from here we have, of course, we have our sodium, we have And of course, the hydrogen attacks this and uh, the bond breaks. So you have we have an acolyte coming. Okay. So at this point, the acolyte will form back the carbonate expelling the chlorine. So we are going to then get aldehyde. So this is what we are going to get. Now from here, we're going to continue the reaction until alcohol is gotten. So we're going to add another molecule of the sodium borohydride to continue the process. So we're going to start with this compound again. So we stopped at the formation of the aldehyde. This is what we have. So from here, we start again with the sodium hydrogen 
So this attacks this compound again, this breaks. And here we have the alcohol side. Okay, and of course, hydrogen has started here. Now we have this. We have an acid workup that was given. We had the H3O plus that was given in the reaction originally. So we just write this out. Okay, so this is going to pick up one of the hydrogens, this bond breaks in and the final product is going to then look like we did draw it earlier. So we have an alcohol. Okay, so that is how you go about writing the mechanism for sodium borohydrides.